What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and um, I'm kind of in a good mood today because we hit two million subscribers this morning. Who would have thought when I started this channel? One million, let alone two million. I mean, a thousand was a pipe dream way back in the day. Almost seven years now I've been running this channel. So I'm gonna do another fun experiment, one that actually has some practical use. So it's kind of a stupid thing that by the end of this video might actually not be so stupid. And there's a lot of inspiration behind what we're about to do. And we'll talk about that right after our sponsor message. Origin PC builds high-performance custom PCs for gamers and professionals backed by a 24-7 US-based support team. Their award-winning high-end PCs offer the latest and best components for gaming and workstations. Origin PC also created exclusive desktop designs including Millennium and Genesis desktops with patented variable mounting technology and now offer a new lineup of laptops with GeForce RTX graphics cards. Customize your own Origin PC desktop or laptop with the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD, featuring read speeds of up to 3,500 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3,300 megabytes per second. For more info on Origin PC systems and the Samsung 970 EVO Plus SSD, click the link in the description below. So you guys know that Little J has built her own computer on this channel now multiple times, and as her little sister gets older, and is conscious and aware of the computer, she's conscious and aware of buttons. And my youngest daughter is almost to the age now where I think she's ready to build her, her own computer. She's obsessed with computers, she really wants one, so that's coming soon. But what we've noticed is over the last year or so, little Jay will be playing on her computer, and then uh, my youngest will walk over and then just be like, to the power button. Now yes, you could disable that power button in the OS by making it do various things like go to sleep, sign out, turn off, or do nothing. But rather than make it do nothing, because little Jay likes to just put her computer to sleep, which is how that button is programmed, where she just push it when we're like, get down here, dinner time, do your homework, whatever. She'll just, uh, she'll push that button and puts the computer to sleep and off she goes. The problem is if you have someone constantly doing that to you while you're trying to play on it, it's really super annoying. Well, I also follow a car channel that I'm a huge fan of that I've been following since he was like very early days, and that's Chris Fix. And he recently talked about how to install a kill switch to your in your car. Now, this is something I've installed a whole bunch in the past because I used to also do car stereo uh, and alarm system installs. Very high-end, very trick, crazy alarm systems where you had sequences to start the car. Designed to just make it harder for a thief, not impossible because nothing's impossible. So I thought, why not use the same concepts and then use his video idea as a trigger for me to install a kill switch into the computer, making it so that you lock out the power button when you don't want it, but have a hidden switch to make it work when you do. This also has a lot of practical uses, like I said, little sisters and or children that you don't want being able to get on the computer uh, without knowing how to start it up. If you do it right, the lesser than tech savvy people will be fooled by this, but anyone that's got you know, any knowledge whatsoever on how a computer works might potentially be able to bypass this. So that's why we're gonna try and hide this. So here's what we've got. We've got some tools that we need to do this. Obviously we've got a toggle switch. This is a momentary switch. You don't wanna have a toggle like an on off because if you forget to toggle it back, then the switch is not gonna work. So we have a momentary switch. So this is something that's got to be pressed in conjunction with the power button to make the power button work. When this isn't pressed, the power button is bypassed. Nothing happens until this is held. So our sequence is gonna be something along the lines of push, push, and then let go, system will do its thing. Same thing to turn it off, push, push, it will turn off. So we also have some wire here that I just sort of stole from excess things I had that I didn't need anymore. So we got some wire. We got some heat shrink because we still want it to look pretty, although this is just one of our stupid J experiments. We got a uh, lighter and we also have a screwdriver, probably get it in our case if we need it. Some wire strippers and side cutters, electrical tape, drill, drill bits because this is not gonna be case specific. You can do this in any chassis and how creative you wanna be with it, how hidden you want to be and whatever kind of sequence you want is gonna be 100% up to you. And we decided to use this case because it's got the gauge in it, the 12 volt gauge I installed back when I did that um, challenge accepted with Jerry like almost two years ago where um, we figured since we use this from an automotive theme, might as well keep it going with this case. So what we're gonna be working off of here is the power switch that would go from your front case button to your motherboard, the one that's labeled power switch. And pretty much every single case is gonna have one of these. Not all cases have reset switches, but we want this to work off of the power switch. So we don't have to take the front of the case apart or anything like that, we're just gonna work off of the harness here. Now, if you don't know how this already works, when this plugs into the motherboard, this basically, when you push the power button, bridges the 12 volt in the 24 pin to fire up the motherboard. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be putting an interrupt in this circuit, which is what this button is for. 
So the wiring that we have here is just for us to build another harness for us to relocate that somewhere else. So essentially we'll be teeing off of one of these wires. So I can go ahead and kind of separate this like this. And this is the part that's gonna be universal in pretty much any case. So we'll give ourselves plenty of slack here so we can put that back obviously in the motherboard. So you wanna to wanna to do it close to the end of the terminal or where it terminates. You wanna do it more mid harness. That way you can keep it behind the chassis. Because if you truly, truly are trying to do this as some sort of a deterrent, then you're gonna to wanna to put this somewhere where it's a little bit less conspicuous. Because here's the problem. Little J, this, this probably would work for her, for her for, I don't know, a couple of times. Because she's smart enough to know like, oh, the power button isn't working. Is my power supply turned on? And she's gonna come back here and look. And if she sees a button, she might go, let's just say it's right here. She might be like, oh, what's this? That's weird. I don't think she'll have the forethought to like push this and push the power button together. But the first time someone sees you do it, well then it doesn't work anymore. So this is perfect for little kids that are gonna be coming up and pushing buttons on your computer and it would kind of keep the power switch from doing anything. Also too, let's say you have a roommate or an older brother or a older child that's smart enough to potentially realize like, oh, they wired something into this computer, that's not right. That's why we're doing the black harness that we can run behind here that blends in. And where I'm thinking I'm gonna put this switch is actually on the top underneath the fan filter so that we push down on the fan filter where we want the switch to be so that you don't see it at all. So you can see I've already trimmed this wire here. And what we need to do now is we need to essentially attach two leads onto this. That is what the uh, heat shrink is for and the electrical tape. Normally I would solder this, but I have my soldering iron and no solder. And we already actually went to the store once today. We don't wanna go again. That's how we went to get this switch. And if you're wondering where I got this switch, I would say Radio Shack, it's out of business. We literally went to AutoZone, into the ricer aisle with all the LEDs, bought the cheapest one we could find that had this demo try me button, stole this out of the package, and then proceeded to throw the LEDs that I bought away because as soon as I opened up the package, the LEDs fell apart and didn't work anyway. So I paid nine bucks for this switch. All right, so all I did right here was just strip both ends of the wires, the one that's on the power switch and then the, the, the wire lead that we're adding. Like I said, normally I would solder this, cut the end, the, the excess off, and then you just have a little ball of solder there. But because this is not a stress part, it's not gonna be moving or anything, it's not like in an engine bay, this will get us by, no problem. But I am gonna heat shrink it though because I'm a huge proponent of using heat shrink over tape where available because tape does get gooey, it comes off. I just put that over right there and this is what the flame is for the heat shrink to do its job, which is to shrink. And as you can see, that wire ain't going anywhere. So we're gonna do the same thing on this other one over here. Look at that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a bigger piece of heat shrink over this and create just a bit of a harness so that it doesn't pull out. You wanna do it on both sides too. Don't hold the heat too long. You don't wanna melt the insulation that's on the wires. there is our half of our harness. So now we have these two ends that I'm gonna also sleeve, because like I said, I want these to really sort of blend in with the rest of the wires in the case, and it doesn't matter which end of the wires it goes to, because again, this is interrupted circuit until you push the momentary switch, which gives it a momentary circuit uh, complete. So what you wanna do with the sleeve though when you cut it, is it's gonna fray at the end, so you wanna take the heat and just hit it a little bit so it kinda melts like that. When it's still kind of pliable, you'll want to sort of straighten it out, but you don't want to melt it to your hand. I did that earlier. So we want to go ahead and get our heat shrink ready for the next bit we're going to do right here because we still have to get our, our actual harness uh, sleeve on there. And what we were going to do now is just, we don't want to be fumbling with things because if you're doing this by yourself, obviously it's going to be difficult. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and put the sleeve on. We're going to push it up as far as we can. We're going to get ourselves some extra slack. That way we can solder our ends and then we'll pull it back and solder or a heat shrink over the end of this. So we'll kind of demonstrate that now. So we're gonna put both wires through. If I didn't measure this too, too long, should be towards the end when we get up to the top right here. Kind of gets a little bit more difficult as the wire goes farther down the sleeve, there's more resistance. The nice thing is if you need more slack, you just go to the end where the wires are and you push it. You see how you get that little kind of a inchworm kind of a look? As you do that, you kind of put the wires farther down. As you can see, we're all the way down to here right now. Hold that up out of the way. Something else we could also do and I'll demonstrate that now is you can use the zip tie to kind of keep it from coming back while you're working with it. Cut the zip tie and then it will stretch back out. 
So just to demonstrate that, you can kind of push this up out of the way, see how it sort of like crunches down like that. Just take the zip tie, put this over the wires, and then zip tie it down. There we go, like that. Make sense? And then when we're done, you can just cut the zip tie, just make sure you don't cut the wires underneath it. So, there's our harness. So the idea is obviously not that you're trying to make it impossible for someone to turn on this PC. You're just trying to make it harder, right? That's how you, that's how you stop a car thief 101 is you don't stop them from being able, you make it take too long to be worth their time. But I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in right now and test it for proof of concept. So if, this, if I did my job right and I did this correctly, pushing the power button should do nothing with it plugged in. And then once I push my momentary switch, it should bring that power switch to life. And then you just have to get creative on where you're gonna put it. Nothing? It's just so you can see it actually. Or we could just use the, the little voltmeter. Haha. -ha. Okay, so nothing. Aha. PC kill switch. Like I said at the start of this video, I think I wanna hide it under this. So I'm gonna have to do a couple of things here. I was hoping that the switch was gonna fit through one of these honeycomb openings perfectly, but it doesn't. It's like barely too big. <laughs> now it's a J video. It put a nick in it, but it also pulled up the case. Like it looked like it got shot with a bullet. <laughs> That's not obvious. That's okay. That'll work. Dude. Boom! Yes! So all we did, and it was Phil's idea, is we just added some washers to the bottom of it, and I used big flat ones that'll keep it flat, and we can kind of control that angle now. So the harness is gonna be out of the way. I'm gonna put this fan back up in there, which is gonna perfectly block that view of it, so you're not gonna see it. That filter's thick enough to where you don't see the button. Not to mention, whose first thought is gonna go to look through the fan filter to see if there's a button keeping a PC from starting? I mean, no one's gonna do that. Well, after this video. <laughs> Everyone might now, yeah. And so that's what it looks like, right? Unless you're looking at it straight down, then, I mean, someone might be like, what's that? But they're gonna go like this. Oh, that's weird. They're not gonna go like this. Ooh. So anyway, guys, there you go. That is your lesser than knowledgeable PC friend deterrent. Or heck, maybe you just wanna protect your extracurricular activities from your parents or your wife or your girlfriend. I don't know, I don't judge. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want. I mean, that's your computer. But as you can see, it's now flush mounted. If you look at it from this perspective here, because we put the harness and stuff on there, you would never freaking know. The only thing is now this case will forever only work with this switch. So there you go, just a fun little video. I got inspired by watching Chris Fix's video um, and then remembered I used to install these on ignition systems all the time. Why not install one on a computer? I think it seems like a practical use case. If you guys have any suggestions for crazy content, you know we like to hear them. Hit me up on Twitter, comment down below. And as always, a huge thank you for two million subscribers. We will see you guys in the next video. I'm not making another video until we hit three million. Jeez. So I guess we're having like a nine month vacation. Yeah. <laughs> that's not his bestest, that's his worstest. So that's how you do it. <laughs> Give me something better than that. <laughs> I mean, <Jeez. laughs> what did, what did, <laughs>